Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to do some organization tips and tricks. So whenever a new game comes into the Side Game library, I have a stock of things that I can use in order to get it organized as soon as possible, and that way I can kind of customize and puzzle out how to best get things started for gameplay purposes, and that way it gets played quickly. So I'm going to go over a couple of things that I do in my library to help make sure games get organized quickly and really efficiently. Without further ado, let's get started. So first thing I want to show you is a large organization tool. And this is kind of crazy, but I don't know if you can see this very well, but this is actually a shoe container. So you can hang these up. They have hooks on the top here. And inside, you'll see that I have just sleeves on sleeves on sleeves. So my favorite for standard size are Ultra Pro. I've got clear, I've got standard white. White's my favorite, just looks really clean on the table. Some uh, board game sleeves, and then also specific organizers, all sorts of things in here from small card sizes to large card sizes. So whenever a new game comes in, it's pretty important that you have a sleeve to take care of it. So I really like these organizers here. They've got those nice shelves and you can hang a bunch of them in the closet. I have two right now that I use for just multiple sleeve sizes, but these are super useful for containing um, just various organization accessories and tools. So I don't expect you to have all the sleeves ever at all times, but for my purposes, it's really nice because you can make sure that all your sleeves are the exact same brand and the uniformity between everything. So I really enjoy this organizing tool and that's a uh, shoe container. The next thing we'll look at are for large card games. So this can be LCGs, this can be a game that's mainly cards that you have multiple expansions for, you just need room for it. And these are BCW boxes. So here, these are called the monster storage boxes. This is actually the medium size, but they are basically large rows for cards. So you've got some dividers in here, but in tandem with some good index cards, and you can pick these up, Dollar Tree, Dollar Store for 200 of them. Uh, with some good index cards, you can lay out row after row after row after row of card, and it's super efficient for storage-wise and for organization purposes. So yes, you could get something a little bit more colorful, but if you need something for pure organization, the BCW brand is probably the best bang for your money. So really enjoy these, use them for all the LCGs, use them for games like Aeon's End, anything that's mainly cards. So I really enjoy these, and that is the BCW boxes, specifically for card games. The next thing we're gonna look at are organizers or inserts from other games. So a lot of the times whenever a game comes in, I tend to throw out the insert it comes with. They usually don't accommodate sleeve cards and we sleeve every game in this library and they're usually just not very useful. However, sometimes I'll find specific inserts that I deem useful. And generally they're gonna come in the form of card trays. So inserts like this, these are really helpful for games that have low amounts of cards. You can slide them in there and some come with dividers already. And the other kind of insert I really like are trays like this. So these are specifically from the newest War Chest expansion, and they have a lid that you can pull off, but they have these nice rounded vaults. So it's, it's good when you are getting new games to pick and choose what you're keeping. If you keep everything, you're going to be overflowing with useless things that you're just kind of hoping to find an insert for, but usually you can find specific things that will hold tokens or cards and You'll, you'll kind of get this idea of this could be useful in the future. So I like to keep little things around like this just in case something does come that requires maybe token organizers, maybe a bunch of round discs, or in this specific case, poker chips. So there's a, lots of games that are using them recently, and I would recommend if you have an organizer you're not using or you're just going to throw away anyway because you're consolidating and combining, I'd save some for future games. Super useful. The next thing I want to talk about are dollar organizers. So I'm a big fan of the Dollar Tree. I think it's wonderful for what it does. It gives you plenty of organization tools for one buck. So three that I use pretty frequently are the artist boxes here. So these are very straightforward. You open up the top, they come in lots of different colors and they have these nice three by four grids. So it's a, you're able to store lots of variety of components. It's easy to just pop the top off, put it on the table and you're ready to go. It also comes with these little inserts so you can divide them into smaller sections if need be. 
So for example, if I'm playing a game like Gloomhaven, I might use one of these to help organize it and put some of the status conditions in each of these sections. So this generally is super useful for things that are not square shaped. Square shaped things will tend to get stuck. So if you're playing a game like Tekenyu, uh, it's got all those square resources, those will be a little bit harder to get out. So you want to think, use things with more rounded edges. They're just easier to pick up. Now, if you do have a game with limited components, then I recommend this small organizer, another one from Dollar Tree. And once again, all these are a dollar, but this one in particular, it's got that same nice organization here, one large dish in the center. And this one in particular has nice curved round bottoms. So you can easily grab what you need. And it's also flatter than the white one. So this one is nice for games that have many different components, but not a lot of them. So one that I use this one for is Bonfire and Clients of Caledonia. So those are two solid games that use this style of insert. And I'm sure if you've seen my videos for organizing, you'll see a lot of these repeats. Speaking of repeats, this one I featured in Praga Caput Regni. This is another larger organizer. I also used it in Catacombs. This is similar idea to the other organizers, once again a dollar, but this is going to hold larger pieces, larger tiles, uh, nice groups of tiles, so because it's that larger space. So it's good to have a large variety of sizes. So I'll show you kind of how we store these. We have a couple of Ikea shelves and they've got their own little boxes and in the boxes you can just see that we have all of these organizers ready to go for when things get in here. And you'll notice on this side, we've got plastic bags on plastic bags. Lots of games will come with those and it's good to have them. Sometimes a plastic bag is really all you need to get a game organized. You can put all of the player components in a bag, throw it to somebody and boom, they're ready to go. So I am a fan of getting rid of plastic bags when I can or when I need to. I hate just having everything in its own plastic bag. So that's why I prefer the larger organizers like this. But if all it takes is a plastic bag, use one. Don't overcomplicate it. So I really like these. Another important thing to have for organization are in case you have a small amount of components. Yes, those large organizers are good, but if you only have a bit of components, then you don't really need them. And that's where these come in. So in our second bin over here, we have these. So these are tiny little organizers. You get them 10 for a dollar, once again at Dollar Tree, but they're little ramekins. And so these are really nice because they come with little lids. So you open up the top and then you can place it under like this. It goes on the table. It's ready to go. It's super nice. It's clear so you can see what it is from a distance. Really helpful. And the fact that they're so cheap is super, super nice. So they come in square ones, but they also come in rounded ones. So you can pick and choose based on the game. I like the square ones personally because they are going to fit really nicely next to each other. Whereas the circular ones, because they've got that round side, they take up a little bit more space. So I like the square ones a lot. But once again, if you're using something that has square components, the round ones are probably the way to go. And then you also just in general want to pick up organizers that are going to be useful. So I really like the artist organizers because you just open the lid and you're ready to go. And you can also do the same thing with these makeup organizers. So they are also a dollar, but you can simply open the top up and they are three sections, but they're a little bit larger. So this is really helpful for games that have large tiles that are kind of in stacks. So that way you can just pull off the lid and you're ready to go. Or it's useful for games with uh, varied components or lots of larger components. So this one is really good for tiny towns. Uh, I use this for Isle of Cats. Super useful, really like these. But in addition, I also carry around these uh, dividers. They're for foam dividers. You can use them in card games. Sometimes when newer LCGs will come out or games that have the potential for expansions, you want to go ahead and get one of those white BCW boxes. These are really nice for making sure that your boxes have some of that empty space taken up and you can use them as dividers as well. So I like to keep a couple of these inside. In addition, you can cut them into smaller pieces. And when you do, that can be useful for getting rid of lid lift issues or making sure that your boxes are kind of nice and even when you put them on a shelf. Uh, sometimes when you put a book or a binder inside of a game, it's gonna cause it to slant. So if you put one of these on one of the sides, usually it'll help rise it up and make it look a little bit more presentable. So super nice there. Other thing I keep in here are bags. So bags are just super useful. I like these large black bags. These are generally for games that use a lot of tiles. So you can just reach in and grab it. I like the ones with oversized openings. That way no one has an issue with grabbing and going. It's super annoying when it takes a while to pull tiles out of a bag. You can also use things like the Tom's Shoe Company. They have their own specialized bags. I personally like this kind for Azul. It's nice to have two bags. so You're not having to dig into the box every time. So 
bags are super functional. In addition, Board Game Geek has some specialty microfiber bags here. And these are very nice. You can get them in lots of different colors. And I really like these for random draw. So if you're playing a game like Keyflower or Maracaibo or any game that has a tile that generally you would shuffle at the beginning of a game and then pull things, you can just put them in a bag. And then you never have to shuffle them because you're always randomly drawing. And it's just super nice to kind of know that's where those tiles are. I don't have to worry about them. They're ready to go. So super helpful, super useful. Those are the microfiber drawstring bags. The other thing that I think is important are ways to store dice. And the best way that I found is repurposing trays for other games. And a big one, uh, thanks to the Trove Chest for Too Many Bones, are the Chip Theory Games dice trays. So these are super nice. You open up the top here. They've got lots of rows for dice and they snap on very tight. As you can see around me, we've got lots of different games and some are gonna come with lots of dice. Think Project Elite or Mythic Battles, Pantheon, or games like Street Masters or Alter Quest. They come with a lot of dice, so it's nice to be able to have a way to organize them here. So I really like the Chip Theory Games dice containers. They're flat, they fit really nicely, and they can help you organize. And just like those other organizers, you pop the lid off and they're ready to go. They're already set on the table organized. Super useful. The last thing I wanna talk about are Binders. So binders are very important for games that have a lot of paper components that are a little bit disorganized. So once again, I'm going to go back to um, the games like Arkham Horror LCG, Marvel Champions, Lord of the Rings LCG, games with lots of sheets of individual papers from different expansions. Having a binder to just store them all is super helpful. You can get these in any sizes. These are 1.5 inch. I tend to use one inch binders for games that don't have a lot. 1.5 inch for games that like are more that are just gonna have loads and loads and loads of pages and are need room for more. So you can kind of pick and choose how you wanna go with this. Now, I also love using binders and using the pocket protectors. So the pocket pages for coins for small card games. So for example, Mansions of Madness is a game where you're going to be going and finding items. And generally they'll just say, hey, go find this specific item. So it's really nice to have a binder where everything is organized alphabetically. And that way, instead of interrupting the game and looking through a deck of cards, you simply open the binder up, find the page, pull it out, you're good to go. And there's no cards you have to shuffle or take out at the beginning of the game. You just simply put the binder on the table and you are ready. You can also use this to help organize games like Kingdom Death Monster, where there's just a gratuitous amount of content and being able to flip through a binder is super useful. So I really enjoy binders. I think they speed up process of games where it's not randomized. And just being able to look and pick is super useful. Other games you can use this in are Gloomhaven, Tainted Grail, things like this. So I really enjoy that. And make sure you get the coin uh, page protectors as opposed to kind of like a standard card game uh, page inserts. So they are usually from Ultra Pro and you can just slide them in here. And you can do a combination of some for, for example, in a Tainted Grail, I have uh, the coin pages for the items and whatnot, the secret items. And then on the right side, I have like the pages for the letters for the people coming and the trait cards that you can unlock with the the Cursed Memories expansion, I think is what it's called. But it's nice to mix and match just anything that's going to help up that setup time. So super useful, the binders. Uh, last thing that I want to talk about, I guess there's two more things. Uh, two more things. This one is called an Architect Tube. So you can find these on Amazon. They are generally supposed to be used for presentations. You'll wrap up a poster in here or a map or something and bring it to a presentation. Uh, I use it for large playmats. So for this one, you can simply place them inside. There are different sizes. You can see here, there's some rungs that you can twist them and pull them so that they're appropriate size. You've got a nice carrying strap. And then on the tap, you simply just unscrew the lid and the mat will come out. And the lids are really cool because they actually unscrew even more and you can put artwork on here. So that's a tainted grail mat. So you can put the artwork on there. So that way you know what game it is at a distance. So super helpful. I really enjoy these tubes. They keep your mats really nice and they're adjustable to the size. Last thing I promise, this one we're gonna be looking at reboxing. So this is Oh My Goods and I'm just using a Race for the Galaxy expansion box. Because let's face it, when you sleeve everything, sometimes your small box card games are not gonna fit in their original box. And that's where reboxing can come in. So it's super nice um, to find boxes that fit specific games, especially if they're fully sleeved. You can see that there. Um, 
got that foam block in there just to make sure nothing slides around and moves around. So you can see that in action. But I really think reboxing is the way to go, especially when you have games with a lot of expansions or if the sleeves don't fit. For example, the medium game, if you sleeve hat, it's not gonna fit in its box, even though that box is really nice. But you have to pick and choose your battles, really. And when I say rebox, I'm not encouraging you to save boxes after boxes after boxes, because generally when you're getting in games, you're going to get a lot of extra boxes from uh, expansions usually. And you can generally combine those in the base game. But if you have small boxes, it's good in my opinion to keep maybe one box of each size. So something small, something a little bit larger, something in the middle, so you can pick and choose. But I do really like being able to rebox things and make it so that you could just grab it and go, as opposed to having to finagle to figure out how to put it back in a box or whatever. So those are my largest organization tips. As you can see, there's a lot here. Whenever something comes in, I kind of break it down and say, okay, what are we gonna do here? Let's learn how to play it first. That way I can put things away appropriately, which is huge, right? You gotta know how to play the game to be able to organize it well, because if you're just putting things based on space, a lot of times that's not going to really help out with setup. So that's, I guess that's my last tip to give you is when you organize something, make sure you know how to play the game. Because if you don't know how to play the game, your organization system is not going to make sense at all. It's going to usually take more time. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time putting things into places that are nonsensical. So make sure you know the game. That way you can tailor, organize it to make sure gameplay is getting started as quickly as possible. Because that's the point of organization, right? Is to get your things well placed so you know exactly where things are that way you can jump start into the game without any worry so if you have any questions about the things you saw here or if you have any organization ideas of your own please let me know down in the comments below um, this is kind of free form so i hope some of you enjoyed this i hope you found this useful i'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button we are growing as a channel and i love to see more of you coming back um, thanks so much for watching side game strong